So welcome everyone. Uh, so this is the second day uh, of our session, Symbolic and Numerical Computation with Polynomials, and the first talk of the, uh, of the afternoon or the evening, depending where you are, is uh, Generalized Witness Sets uh, by Frank Sotil. So when you want. Okay, well, thanks for having me. I'm really sorry we're not there. Uh, in Buenos Aires, but uh, good, whatever part of the day you're in. Um, and uh, thanks for coming. Uh, a, a part of this that I'm going to talk about, but not the main part, maybe even the most developed part, is joint with um, uh, John Hanstein, Anton Lake, and Jose Rodriguez. And let me begin. This uh, this is, um, I, I guess, well, I, I say this is sort of on the theory, very much the theoretical side of numerical computation algebraic geometry. And one thing to understand is that, I mean, this is something I, I came to realize over the years is that numerical algebraic geometry, it's a very, actually a very geometric way of computing an algebraic geometry. Uh, and and, and so, so it works on the geometric side of the dictionary under our subject. And what it does is it, <clears throat> I mean, it actually computes points on varieties or solutions of polynomials. And many of its algorithms are based upon geometric constructions um, such as directly computing monodromy of a, when you have a branch cover, or computing intersections of two varieties by reduction to the diagonal. It has a, it has a very vivid geometric feel to it. And it also has connections to intersection theory. Uh, you know, for some time, people have used it uh, uh, to compute segregate classes of varieties or work explaining newton kunkoff bodies. And, and these, these, are, these are core topics in intersection theory these days. And I, I'm gonna talk about some further connections to intersection theory uh, first one is relating the notion of rational equivalence, uh, which is the equivalence relation on intersection theory, to homotopy continuation, and then generalizing the notion of witness sets uh, in this context. Well, so, so let me explain briefly uh, what homotopy continuation is about. So I take I have a complex algebraic variety. So, so th this, this will look a little different than you might be familiar with, because I'm looking at it geometrically. I have a complex variety, and I have um, some curve defined by some polynomials or equations that are that's contained in that variety across the complex numbers. And the projection of that curve to the complex numbers is dominant. And uh, actually, it's not regular. Yeah, well, OK. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say it's regular at, at t equals 0 and 1. OK, um, that's, that, that's fine. And restricting the curve to, to the interval 0, 1 in the complex numbers gives a collection of arcs that lie in the curve and above 0, 1. And then they connect points of the start system, which, is, which are the things you see on your right, to the target system, which are the solutions you see on the left. And the set of polynomials evaluated at, at 1 or 0. Now, now what, what, given this, these data, then, then standard algorithms in numerical analysis, namely path tracking algorithms, they, you can walk along these arcs to compute solutions of the target system knowing solutions of the start system. And what you see here is a little cartoon showing um, Euler correction and Newton, no, or, or, Euler steps, you know, tangent approximation, and Newton correction uh, at, at certain not, not points in, in the interval to get me to the end. And that's, that's the basic idea of homotopy continuation. So let me, let me tell you the basic idea of rational equivalence. So the group Z sub K of K cycles on an algebraic variety X well, this is a free abelian group whose basis are all the irreducible subvarieties of X of dimension K. It's enormous. So now, now the fundamental cycle of, of some K cycle, or, or actually of some K dimensional subscheme, the fundamental cycle of the K dimensional subscheme is an element in this group. And what it is, is just the formal sum of the components of this K dimensional subscheme, where the coefficients are their mul multiplicities that scheme of, of, of these components in V. And so it's a positive cycle or, or effective cycle. So for a subvariety of X um, cross P1 of dimension K plus one, and you know, suppose you have a subvariety, you have a map from that subvariety to, to, to the projective line, uh, which is dominant. So it's, um, its image is dense and zero and one are contained in the image. Uh, then, um, then if you take the inverse image of zero as a cycle, minus the inverse image of one as a cycle, um, th 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 that'll be an element of this free abelian group of K cycles. And that's called an elementary rational equivalence. 
it just says it, 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 it equates the two fibers, or rather, modded out by that will equate the two fibers of this map. These, the subabelian group of rational equivalences, that's again as a free abelian group, and the quotient is called the Chow group of X, or the kth Chow group of X. Now, rational equivalence is, is quite connected to homotopy. It's one of the ways to think about getting a homotopy, although maybe a little bit abstract. So if you take an elementary rational equivalence as before, as you see on the picture on the right, um, which is induced by some subvariety y containing x cross p1. Um, now suppose that some other subvariety of x has co-dimension k. That's the opposite dimension of, 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 of the fibers of, of y. And that it meets these two fibers at 0 and at 1 transversely. OK, then that tells me then that the intersection of y with gamma, it contains a curve c in this product. Uh, and this curve is, the map to p1 is dominant. And 0 and 1 are in the image of f. I mean, they're not necessarily regular values because um, f might not, x, x, you know, this curve might not be proper above 0 and 1. But if they are, then are the regular values since of the, I believe the transversality assumption. Um, and so consequently, this gives a homotopy. It, you know, you know, you know, you know, I don't have equations yet, but just a homotopy in terms of a curve with these properties, where the start system are the points of the fiber intersect lambda at one, and the target system is the points above above zero intersect lambda. Now, as I note at the bottom, you need to have all this stuff to be given explicitly by polynomials to get a tr traditional homotopy, one that you could plug into a computer. But home, but rational equivalences give rise to homotopies. Now, in in numerical algebraic geometry, the what actually what launched the subject is that is is a method to uh, to represent a, a, an algebraic variety on a computer using only the facts that you can solve systems of polynomial equations. And this representation is called a witness set, and, and I would say it's the fundamental data structure in numerical algebraic geometry. So, so given a variety of Pn of dimension k. Suppose it's a component of some collection of polynomials, the variety of f, where f is a collection of polynomials, and or a union of components, but, but I'll, it's okay to just do with a component. And take a lambda to be a general linear subspace of p to the n of co-dimension k. So that's the opposite dimension of v. And since it's general, that intersection by Bertini is transverse and is, is this finite set of points. Then we call this triple the set w the linear space lambda, and these functions f, or the polynomials f, we call this a witness set for v. And, and, and this is the data structure that allows us to study v using methods from numerical analysis. Now, observe that the degree of this set w, it's, a, just, it's really just the number of points in it, since that's a transverse intersection, is the degree of v as a subvariety of p to the n. And what gets all this going is, is, is the idea that, that W, the set W, it represents the, this rational equivalence class of V in the kth Chow group of Pn. And, and the way I think of this is that if you take a general linear subspace of dimension K, the same as V, then the class of V is equal to the number of points in W times the class of L. That's what it means for, for, for the number of points in W to be the degree of V. So I'm going to think of this as a way of represent, you know, of, of so there's some data here, lambda and L and the set set of points. So I think of this as representing uh, V in the in the child group, but it's also these are actually points on V as well. That makes it a little more powerful than simply just a number. So so as I express this, uh, can you is a question we'd asked is can you think about witness sets in a much more general context? And the goal you know, in the context of how far can you go in, in, in intersection theory with witness sets. And the goal is to develop a notion of witness sets for subvarieties of, of, of any variety X. That rep, uh, so these notion of witness sets, they represent subvarieties of X in the, in the child group using intersection data. And perhaps uh, can be as a basis for algorithms to manipulate, to, mani to manipulate them. Now, without getting into the details, which are explained in, in a, in a paper that I have that I presented ISAC a year ago, is that general witness sets are somewhat needy. They're, they're, like, they're like, you know, children or you know, maybe, you know, undergraduates or, or something. Um, what you need is uh, finitely generated child groups of X. 
because I want some finite representation. So I need a, like a maybe finite basis for it. Uh, you need to you need to recover its intersection data with sub varieties of complementary dimension. And so this is this is a form of Poincaré duality. It says there's some duality on on, on the child groups. Now, in order to actually get points from intersections with complementary dimensional varieties, you need some sort of transversality and maybe a moving lemma, which tells you you can move things around a little bit. Now, and these, for people in intersection theory, these are really large asks. And probably you know, associated with the first one, you want effectivity. You want the basis of your child group to be fundamental classes of effective cycles. Um, uh, so, so no negative coefficients. Well, it turns out that the first two things that these are, that are necessary is that they hold if X is smooth and projective, but you have to replace rational equivalence by numerical equivalence, which is a slightly um, less algebraic equivalence relation. Um, although it's not, it's not completely um, at, at odds with, with numerical, with, with rational equivalence. And I said, there's a detailed discussion in, in this preprint that I listed. Well, I mean, this idea, so we, you know, we actually first started talking about this idea almost a decade ago and, and didn't develop it. But in the meantime, at that time, but in the meantime, um, several people developed a notion of multi-projective witness sets. So these are witness sets for sub varieties of products of projective spaces. And I'll present a very brief discussion of some of the main points of, of such witness sets in a product of two projective spaces. So, so let X be the product of PN and PM. And then the child group of X, well, it's a free abelian group on certain cycles, um, uh, the case child group, uh, you, you take uh, like L1 upper P cross L2 upper P. These are product of linear spaces in the two copies of the, the two projective factors. And the upper index is their dimension. And because of this condition, the P plus Q is K, that's, that, that's, that sub variety has dimension K. And this forms a basis for the child groups of in, in degree K and then letting K vary it forms a basis for all the child groups. So that's a finite basis. Uh, a multi-projective witness set for V it, it, it we've come up with is a triple W dot lambda dot and F where W dot and lambda dot are, are lists or sets of, of objects. So F is first of all, bi-homogeneous forms where V is a component of their common vanishing. It's bi-homogeneous because these are the natural functions on a product of projective spaces. Um, and so this sequence lambda, it's a collection of products of linear spaces uh, uh, whose co-dimensions are, are K, or, or rather some of the co-dimensions is K. So this is, this is a, a dual basis to the Ls that I wrote down previously. And you want them general so that they're in general position with respect to the other linear spaces. And then W is simply the intersection of V with these general co-dimension K products of linear spaces. Um, and that'll be transverse by just you know, general, general information. And what to observe is that, is that okay, what, what we find is the number of points in W, in fact, the whole size of this data structure is much, much smaller than a witness set for X uh, in this projective space. Um, the product of projective spaces uh, you can think of these as rank one matrices of format n plus one by n plus one, and that natural and and and, and, and so x sits inside of this projective space of of, the, of 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 rank rank one matrices, but but uh, but there's a huge multi multiplication in its degree. It's like exponentially great increase in the degree. Now, so it turns out that we've in papers the three of us wrote, Jose, um, Anton, and John, and I in different combinations. Uh, we basically show that this is as flexible as a traditional witness set. And there's a series of papers which explain some of that and more. Okay. So this slide is, I, I mean, I was going over this yesterday and it's somewhat incomprehensible. It's a, it's a, 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 a I should say, it's rather detailed. Um, it's actually spe spelling out with indices, which is not very fun to watch, um, what actually, a general witness set would be in this setting when you have some of these assumptions. So you have a smooth projective variety and I'll take its dimension as N. And I suppose that the child groups are finitely generated with, well, I said an effective basis and a non-degenerate intersection pairing. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain what those mean. So, so and, and then 
an effective basis means that I can find a basis of cycles that are actually sub sub schemes or sub varieties. Now, now B sub K of the Kth Chow group. And because the intersection theory pairing is non-degenerate, um, it's because X is smooth, um, it equals the rank of, of the N minus Kth group. Uh, so, and then now then in dimension K, I want to choose rank many sub varieties that generate the Kth Chow group as a free abelian group. So this is this is this line here. I'll indicate that so you can follow as I read through the slide. Okay, so and, and, and you have this for all k. Okay. So now so now then a witness collection. I, I, I should have called it the collection of the page before because it's a set of sets, maybe, and, and using sets for two different things in, in, in one sentence is is, is a this is a yellow card. So this so a witness collection for a k-dimensional set, it's 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 a pair here. I'm going to ignore the equations of witness sets and and sub varieties, where what the what I take for sub varieties is, is a list of um, general sub varieties of co-dimension k that that uh, that form a basis for their Chow group of co-dimension k. Um, that's what that's that's what this equality says here. And we want they want to choose them at general. So this is there's a, a moving lemma you need so that if I take the intersection of v with with these lambdas, each lambda that's is it's a transverse, so it's a set of points. And then w is the list of points. Okay, so that's that's the witness collection. Now, I wanted to say that you can recover the cohomology class of v or the child class of v from a witness collection using intersection data. And that's what that's what the next three lines explain. So the claim is once you have this, then the child class of V is a sum of these of, of okay of certain numbers C I of V times L I L I L I is where, where the basis elements of dimension K. Um, and I'll tell you what the C I's are. Well, um, I let M be a matrix of numbers, um, and these numbers are intersection numbers. Uh, they're the intersection numbers between the basis elements of dimension K and those of co-dimension K. Um, it's just the degree of the intersection since these are general. And that's the degree of the product of, of, these, two, of these two elements in the child group, which because X is smooth and projective is in fact a ring. And this is just the degree of, of, of that product. So, so this M is a matrix of degrees and Non-degenerate means that it's invertible. And if you take the degrees of the elements of the witness set and multiply it by M on the left, the inverse of M on the left, you get these, these coefficients C. So, so this is a this explains you can recover V from, from a witness collection using intersection data. Okay, that there's actually quite a lot. And and this this is quite a lot from projective space or even multi-projective space to general witness sets. But let's look at this in one special case where everything works out. Now, I explained that general witness sets require a lot of, um, they're very needy. And, it, and there's a class of varieties, which are classical and well-studied, called flag varieties, which have all the best properties for general witness sets. I mean, everything you want can hold there. Uh, in fact, actually, knowing that this worked for flag varieties was one thing which, which gave, gave one confidence to make the definitions before, that there actually was this, was, this was not a theory with one example, namely projective varieties. And it turns out that it's even better, that even some specialized algorithms, such as regeneration, which I will not get into, that's solving equation by equation, they hold for witness sets for flag varieties, um, and, or, or products of flag varieties. And th this is what was observed for products of projective spaces in the series of papers that I mentioned before. So rather than go through this for a flag variety, I'm just going to talk about one example to illustrate what happens. And this is the first example of a flag variety that is not a projective space or product thereof. So I'm going to consider the gross mining of one dimensional subspaces in P4 or lines in P4. And I'm going to fix a flag of subspaces. So these are this is a point contained in a line, contained in two space, contained in three space, contained in P4. And then fixing this, if I take any set of indices, uh, i less than j between 0 and 4, I get what's called a Schubert variety. And these are the set of lines in P4 that meet 
EI, where I is the low, lower of the two indices, and are contained in EJ. And it turns out the dimension of this is I plus J minus one. And Schubert, 130 years ago, proved a basis theorem. Essentially, that the classes of these Schubert varieties for a fixed flag, they form a basis for the child groups of the Grassmannian of lines in P4. OK, so, so let me talk about witness, uh, one example of a witness set for lines in P4. Here at the top, I've re revised the definition of a Schubert variety. So now it turns out that, that for a fixed flag, these have some nice properties, that, uh, that one Schubert variety is contained in another if their indices are comparable in, in the partial order um, uh, where you could co co compare each component. And you can see this partial order illustrated at right. Um, uh, zero, one is the smallest, it's a point. Three, four is the whole Grassmannian. And now if I set ij hat to be four minus j comma four minus i, this relation between ij and ij hat, well, combinatorially, it's just reflection in the line of symmetry, in the vertical line of symmetry. Um, and one, three hat is one, three, and zero, four hat is zero, four. And this, this involution, it re re respects duality of, in, of Schubert varieties is the best possible way. So if you take two different flags, then it's easy to see the intersection of the two Schubert varieties, Lij and L hat Ij for the two different flags is simply a line. And I've written this out. Um, it's the line has to meet Ei and be contained in E prime four minus I, which is a point. It, 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 you know, so this intersection, the line has to contain this intersection, that's a point. It has to contain this intersection as well, and that's also a point, it's the span of the two points. Now, here's a, let me give one example of a Schubert witness set. And this is this sort of a famous example. Um, if you take a smooth quadric in P4, this is the zero set of a, of a, of a homogeneous quadratic in P4. And I let V sub Q be the set of lines on Q. This is a Fano variety. It turns out that it's, it's three dimensional. Um, and I won't explain that to you, but it's, a th it's uh, now the Grassmannian here is six dimensional. So this is actually half dimensional subset of the Grassmannian. And so Schubert witness set for VQ comes from, comes from the data in the middle line here. And it's a pair of sets, W13 and W04, and two Schubert varieties for E general, where Wij is the points in VQ. These are the lines that lie in the quadric that also lie in that Schubert variety. And it's not hard to see that W04 is empty because to be in W04, your line has to meet a general point E0 in, 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 in E dot. And a general point does not lie in the quadric. So, so there are no lines in the quadric that meet a general point. And the other one is four lines, and I won't get into that. But, but this is an example of witness set. And for instance, you can, you can do this um, uh, using this witness set. There's a simple calculation. I mean, this tells you what the class of VQ is in the Grassmannian. If I take VQ for a different quadric, I, I would want to take the product of these two classes. And it, that product turns out to be four squared times the product of this with itself, which is a point, which is degree one. And so this is the this is the famous computation that there are 16 lines on the intersection of two general smooth quadrics in P4. And that's all that I wanted to, to tell you about. So thank you very much. And this is the end of my talk. So thank you very much. So is there any any question by uh, uh, people in the audience, just uh, turn on your microphone and ask. I can go back to the slides if you want. Hi, Frank. Hey, Michael. Um, was I, did I catch it correctly that you replaced uh, the rational equivalents with uh, numerical equivalents? Yeah, y y yes. So, so I explained that if you replace rational equivalents by numerical equivalents, then, 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 then the image of the algebraic cycle is, is well, it's it sits inside of, of homology, and so it's finitely generated. So, does this? I didn't see anything, but maybe I missed some of the details. Would this work for um, Q divisors or R divisors? So, could you use? Could you replace? Could you relieve, um, reduce some of the uh, extra conditions by just using like very ample generators? 
Um, I haven't really thought about that. I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, yeah, I, 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 in the in in the paper there, I was just trying to ask what do you need and where you can get it. So 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 there's there's a witness set in numerical equivalence, but it may be hard to like do anything with it because numerical equivalence is a little fuzzier than rational equivalence. Sure. Um, I mean, you can certainly replace algebraic equivalence if you're willing to do. Um, yeah, you, 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 you can replace algebraic equivalence by, or rational equivalence by algebraic equivalence. So, um, and you, it's not, you have to think about it a little bit, but I think uh, Jose and Carlos and Julia Lindbergh have, have explained how, that, how you would do that, although they don't say that in their paper. All right, thanks. So, any more questions or comments? So if not, uh, let's thank uh, Sutil again. Great. Thanks a lot. And, uh,